Hi everyone, it's Dr. Steph. I'm one of the lecturers for the financial literacy curriculum at U of T Med, and I'm also on the financial aid committee. Recently, I did a debt repayment lecture for the U of T medical students who will be graduating this month, and I wanted to record it so that the info can be useful to all students who are graduating with debt, not just uh, medical students, but pretty much all students in Canada. So you just graduated. So in this lecture, we're going to be talking about what happens to your student loans after you graduate, what are the interest rates and the repayment terms, whether you should consolidate your student loans into your line of credit, as well as tips and programs that can help you pay off loans faster and things that I personally use to um, pay off my loans faster. And finally, what to do if you can't pay your loans off. So while you're a student, the interest rate on your student loans is 0%. But let's talk about what happens to the loans after you graduate and how to understand your NSLSC account. So in Canada, everyone's student loans have two components, a federal component and a provincial component. And this is based on what province your permanent address um, is. So on the last day of the last month, you're a student. That's when your student loans enter something called the grace period or the non repayment period and all key terms in this lecture will be highlighted in green. And this is a six month period where you're not required to start paying off the loans, especially since for most new grads, like not in medicine, they're not making income yet or haven't found a job yet. So it's kind of nice uh, time of non-repayment to get their finances together. Now, although this is called the grace period for your provincial loans, if you're in New Brunswick, Saskatchewan or Ontario, um, the interest still accumulates. So as you can see on my account, right, the interest is 3.45%. Um, that's since changed, which I'll talk about in a later slide. Um, during this time, you know, some students can pay off the interest only just to pay, uh, prevent it from getting added to the loan balance once the grace period is over, which is on November 1st. And that's when you have to actually start paying down your interest and principal. So the, as I mentioned earlier, the federal portion of your loan has an interest rate of 0% until March, 2023. But after that, there are two interest rate options to choose from, fixed versus floating. So the floating interest rate, it's currently the prime rate. So that's 3.2% at the time of recording, but it does change. So what I would suggest is Google Bank of Canada prime rate, and then you'll find out what it is at your time of uh, of paying down the loan. And this is basically the default option. For the fixed interest rate, the prime it's prime rate plus 2%. So with floating interest rates, it, it fluctuates, right? So as you can see, um, if you go with the default option, which is the floating interest rate, um, you'll notice on this chart that over the past couple of years, it's kind of changed, right? So right now it's it's uh, let's say if it's 2.7%, then before that, you know, 0.5% um, increase in the prime rate later, it's now 3.2%, right? So it does fluctuate. Whereas for fixed, it's kind of just like fixed at the current prime rate plus 2%. And the thing with the um, fixed interest rate is that once you fix that interest rate at the amount, you can't revert back to your floating interest rate. Now, if you're in Ontario, like me, um, there's only just one type of option, which is the prime rate plus 1%. So if you're in a different province, right, the provincial portion of your loan, it might have different interest rates. So I would pause the video here and find your own province to find out what the rates are. And there's also a good calculator on the Canada.ca website. So I've linked it here um, and it allows you to play around with the numbers just to kind of see what option works out best for you. Uh, this might apply better after March 2023rd when the interest rates on federal loans are no longer 0%. So now let's talk a little bit about repayment terms and what does that mean? So when it comes to how long you have before you have to pay off all of your loan, at default, it's at 114 months or 9.5 years. And this is known as the amortization period. So all of the terms in green, uh, bolded in green, are key terms in the lecture. And the benefit of this is that you can pay off your loan sooner 
if you have a shorter amortization period, you might pay less interest and over, and over time, the downside is you might make larger monthly payments. So you can also have a revision of terms to extend it to 174 months or 14 per 14.5 years. And the benefit of that is you can pay off the loan later, it gives you a bit more time. The downside is you pay more interest. And you know, if you're not having that much monthly income, then this option might give you smaller monthly payments um, instead. Now, a common question that a lot of students ask me is, should I consolidate my loans into a line of credit? Most students have access to a student line of credit, which is quite a significant amount. And uh, this is a concept known as loan consolidation, which basically means to combine all of your smaller loans into one loan with ideally less interest. So for example, back in my day, that's me when I graduated, the federal interest, uh, federal student loan interest, um, it was prime plus 2.5%, and for fixed, it was prime plus 5%, which was much higher. So of course, it made sense for me to uh, consolidate my loans into the line of credit, which was currently at the prime rate minus 0.25%. So what I did was I used my line of credit to pay off those um, student loans with the exception of about $9,000. And I'll explain the reason why in a later slide. And uh, at that time, obviously, it seemed like it was the better choice, right? So when it comes to changes to repayments, because that was back in 2018 when I graduated, and since then there's been a lot of changes. So for grants, obviously, you don't have to pay those back, but there's been some changes to loans, right? So now you get to choose which portion you want to pay back, the provincial or the federal. Whereas before, in my day, uh, when you made a payment, it would just go proportionately to both federal or provincial portions. And now with the federal portion being 0%, there is really no point in paying that off just yet. So if you were to use your line of credit to pay off a portion, it's probably better to do it with the provincial portion. And how do you do this? Like, how do you just pay one portion off and not the other, right? So currently on the NSLSC website, I didn't see a way to do this just yet. They, maybe there will be in the future, but I would give the NSLC reps a call and I've included their number here. They're really friendly and they're really helpful. So they will definitely help you arrange how to do that. Now, before you do all that, you know, there's also something else you should think about. So for the interest on your student loans, there is also a 15% federal tax credit. Um, and that's, you can claim that on line 31900. And that tax credit helps reduce the amount of taxes you owe. But note that this tax credit doesn't apply to line of credit interest, only on student loan interest. So there is a bit of calculation that you would have to do. And there are certain debt calculators that you can use to figure out how much the tax credit would be for you. So let's solidify that a bit by using my personal case situation. So in my case, I had 100,000 in student debt. And for me, uh, when I called the NSLSC, they told me 96% of it was federal loans and 4% of it was provincial loans. So let's say if I graduated this year, my federal loans, 96,000 would have zero interest. My provincial loans, 4,000 would be charged an interest of prime plus 1%. Now, if you put it into a calculator, let's say I decide to leave it in my OSAP instead of using my line of credit to pay it off. Um, so if I put it in an interest calculator, I would have had to pay about $857 uh, in interest over the 114 months, for example. And over that time, my tax credit uh, would be about $171. So in total, the overall interest I would have had to pay was $685 if you subtract the two numbers. But let's say if I use my line of credit, to pay off the $4,000. Now my interest is prime minus 0.25% instead of prime plus 1%. So I would have had to pay about $591 in interest over the same amount of time. So in this case, it actually would have been more advantageous for me to use my line of credit to pay off that provincial portion. But I encourage you to use these loan calculators for your personal situation to kind of figure it out like, what um, would be beneficial for you. 
Finally, a caveat is that this rough calculation doesn't take into account government policy. Like during the pandemic, we've actually seen pauses on interest rates, both federally and provincially. So if you had consolidated your loans all into the line of credit, maybe you wouldn't have been able to take advantage of those policies meant to benefit students. But then again, it's hard to predict the future. So how did I pay off student debt and what were some of the strategies that I used? So when it comes to debt repayment, the most common ways talked about on the internet is the debt snowball method and the debt avalanche method. And basically the debt snowball method is looking at paying your smallest loans first to have those early wins before tackling the larger, uh, larger loans. Whereas the debt avalanche method is more like paying off the loans with the highest interest first and then tackling the lower interest ones to save money on interest. Um, so for myself, I just wanted to make sure I did something consistent. I only had like one loan, right? So they didn't really apply to me. So those might be more applicable if you have like multiple different loans as well, like credit card and things like that. Um, so what I did was I set up pre-authorized payments on my debt. So I sort of calculated about 10% of my salary, uh, which was 5k per month as a resident. And so I had that just automatically going towards my debt. One program that really helped me pay off my loans was the Canada Loan Forgiveness for Doctors and Nurses program. So for each year that I provided a minimum of 400 hours of service to a rural community, I got an $8,000 reduction to my federal loans, which is why I left approximately $9,000 remaining in my student loans. And this program can provide up to $40,000 in student loan forgiveness over five years. Just make sure that you use the postal code lookup tool to make sure that the rural area you're practicing does qualify. Now each province has their own interest relief and loan forgiveness programs. And I've put up a slide to kind of summarize each province. You might want to pause the video here, look for your own province. Um, if your province is not included in here, then it's probably because they didn't have a loan relief program or I wasn't able to find one. If you do know of it and I missed it in my slides, like please leave me a comment about that. Now, something just to be careful about if, if you're in Ontario is the um, resident loan relief program. So that's for medical residents. Um, for this program, you'll have your interest covered for as long as you provide a minimum of five years of return to service in the province of Ontario. Now, this might be better if you're gonna be doing a five-year residency on Ontario, but if you're a family medicine resident, right? Um, you know, if you're gonna take advantage of that rural forgiveness program I talked about in the previous slide, you know, you can't actually double dip into this program as well from what I've heard from residents. So personally, if I had to choose, I think the rural program is a bit more worth it from an economic perspective. Depends on how big your student loan is. You might just have to calculate whether all that interest you're going to pay is going to be in the $8,000 amount, right? But, you know, if you're not going into family medicine then and you plan to be in Ontario for five years, then that might be a program that's uh, applicable to you. So when I graduated and became a staff physician, I changed my line of credit to a professional line of credit. And basically it allows me to um, keep my interest rate the same at prime minus 0.25%. Um, and around that time, you know, you can still have the option to only pay interest instead of the principal, like chunk of the, of the loan. But because as a staff physician, my monthly income increased to be about like 20 to 25 K per month, I really went ham on my debt. Um, I live with health housemates. I, I took public transportation. I worked three jobs and actually I worked a lot of weekends because I graduated pretty much right in the height of COVID where I had to do a lot of vaccinations, calling patients about COVID, things like that. So around that time, I worked a lot. My monthly expenses were probably about 2K per month and everything else just went into uh, paying off the debt in a few months. Now, I know that there is this whole debate about, you know, should you invest or is it a better option to pay debt? And in fact, I made a whole video about it, which um, I've linked over here. But uh, for me, it took me about, you know, five months going ham on my debt. Um, whereas, you know, if I had invested the money over the five months, I actually come to think of it, um, I wouldn't have seen much change in my money or I would have lost money because at that time the market just dropped due to like the COVID variants. 
So for me, it was kind of just like having short, short term fo forced savings. And it didn't really feel too much like a, you know, lifestyle sacrifice to live at the same spending level I did as a resident, even though I was making four times more. After all, it was basically like the same lifestyle I was accustomed to anyways. So because I kind of like to compartmentalize and in the end, just getting rid of my debt completely not only did wonders for my credit score, it also freed up space um, in my line of credit for other uses like paying taxes or going towards home expenses. Um, and not to mention the credit score also helped me get pretty favorable mortgage rates in the future as well. Now, just for the sake of comprehensiveness, I'm just going to briefly touch upon this concept called cash damming because I have heard it being recommended by some accountants, some um, staff physicians talking about this strategy to new grads, and I just want you to know what it's called. Cash damming is basically when you convert your personal debt into business debt as a sole proprietor, so if you're not incorporated. Now, you can use your business income to pay the line of credit down, then obtain a business loan to pay off your business expenses, which would make the interest payments tax deductible if they were used for business expenses. Whereas before, uh, as a line of credit, like a personal line of credit, you can't, um, you, don't, you don't get that tax um, deduction or you don't get that uh, tax credit. So if you are incorporated, then the similar concept is known as shareholder advances. Now, if you, now that you know about these concepts, you know, be sure to speak with your financial advisor or accountant to see if they would be uh, good strategies for you. Finally, what happens if you end up in a situation where you have trouble paying off your student loans? So what you should know is that if you miss payments for nine, more than nine months, then your student debt go to collections and that can really negatively affect your credit score. So you don't want that to happen. The other thing is you also can't just declare bankruptcy to just erase all of your student loans. So you should call the NSLFC to ask them about the repayment assistant plan. And this is a six month plan that you can actually renew after the six months is over. And there's no limit to how much you can apply. So this plan would cover um, the interest payments so that whatever you pay can go directly to the principal amount. Um, and eligibility for, for this program is kind of based off of your family size and your income threshold. So while I don't think most new medical grads would qualify based on the residency salary, depending on the family size, you know, you might, or if you're watching this and you're not in medicine, then this might actually be a good program for you. And there you have it. That's my lecture on student debt. I hope it was helpful. And I've also linked a resource made by us at the financial aid office at U of T um, for additional info in the description. So please remember to like and subscribe to be notified of future lectures. Thank you.